Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Callie Osted. With me, I have Jenna Barge and Karen Collers. Um, they're going to talk to us this afternoon about the upcoming Agritourism and Adventure Travel Workshop. If at all, um, during the presentation you have any questions, you can email me. It's callie.osted at nebraska.gov. So they're going to give us some great information about the workshop. And um, just at the end, be sure to take our survey. And for now, I'll let the ladies take it over. So thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Well, we're excited to be here today to talk to you about our upcoming workshop. Each year, the Nebraska Tourism Commission hosts a workshop aimed at helping Nebraskans start, grow, market successful agritourism, ecotourism, and adventure travel workshops. This year, we'll have a day of bus tours, so you'll get behind the scenes at different uh, successful businesses around the Nebraska city area, including Arbor Day Farm, Bloom Where You're Planted Pumpkin Patch and Vintage Market, Slaughtery Vineyard Estates, and Midwest Hop Producers. We'll also have the Taste and Feel of Nebraska, which is set up or designed like a farmer's market that will take place Wednesday evening. And it's a great opportunity to network and see what other Nebraska-made products are out there that you can use for cross-marketing in your businesses. We'll have a day of educational sessions will be offered um, with a series of exciting speakers, and we'll get, share those with you here shortly. And then at the end, Nebraska City has done an amazing job with putting together some exciting optional extras um, activities for the attendees to take part in. Another thing, it will be based out of the Lead Lodge and Conference Center in Nebraska City. Uh, we do want to make note that tomorrow, Friday, January 31st, is their last day of, of holding the room block. So please make sure you get your reservations made today, uh, for sure by the end of tomorrow. The hotel reservations can be made by calling 402 873 8733 and just ask for the Nebraska Agritourism and Adventure Travel Workshop room block. The rates are $99 for a single room and then $109 for double occupancy. But again, I just really encourage you to make your room reservation. The block does expire tomorrow, January 31st. And as always, <clears throat> um, we invite you to become a valued sponsor of the workshop. Um, our sponsors play an integral role in the success of these workshops um, and really making them um, as great as we can. Um, <clears throat> as a sponsor, you will be promoting and targeting your product or service to the people who will benefit from it the most, all while increasing your share of the state's ever-growing tourism market. Um, a typical audience at the workshop will include anyone who wants to start or grow a successful agritourism, ecotourism, or adventure travel business. Um, typical attendees would then include farmers, ranchers, um, outfitters, vineyard operators, brewers, you pick operators, managers of ecotourism or adventure attractions, um, chamber and tourism directors, and others. So we have quite a wide, uh, wide audience. It's a great networking opportunity. Um, um, and for more details about how you can sponsor the event, um, which includes um, running a booth, so you'll have access to a booth, um, and you'll be able to network with um, all of the workshop attendees. Um, some more information about how you can sponsor, you can contact me, um, and I've got my name, my email address, and my phone number there on the slide. And these slides, as always, will be made available to you um, after the presentation. So on Tuesday, um, so just to kind of take you through what we've got in store for you, um, on Tuesday, February 25th, um, we'll kick off the workshop as we usually do with our uh, tourism commissioners meeting, and that will take place from 3 to 5 p.m. in Nebraska City at the Fox Center event space. Um, we have that at the address for that listed online at our website. Um, and um, the meeting is open to the public. So we encourage you, if you're curious, to come and see what, um, what our Tourism Commission meetings are like. Um, also, we have an exciting um, opportunity to uh, taste test some Bloody Marys. So Nebraska City, um, um, each year they showcase, they have an annual competition for Bloody Mary making, um, and so they've offered to um, host this Bloody Mary tasting as kind of an example of, um, you know, a small glimpse into what that competition might be like. And um, this is, of course, for workshop registrants only, 
um, and you do need to be, of course, 21 or older to participate in that event. And so that, that'll be kind of an after the commission meeting before um, the Farm to Fork dinner event. Um, so the other event on Tuesday is our Farm to Fork dinner. Um, that's going to take place from 5.30 to 8 p.m. This is one of our um, included optional extras this year. So we have a list of optional extras that we encourage you to sign up for. They do cost extra money, but I think we think and we, we, we know that they will be well worth your while to participate in. Um, so this Farm to Fork dinner is again kind of an example of um, an event that Nebraska City hosts yearly outside of this workshop where they bring together different chefs um, from the area and they use um, their expertise um, and their culinary finesse to come up with exciting seasonal um, courses that will become part of a meal. Um, so again, this is kind of a miniature version of that, but something that we're really excited to be offering you. Um, and the cost for that is going to be $25. You do need to register for that in advance if you would like to participate. We need to get a head count, so if you're interested in that activity, again, you need to register for that when you register for the workshop. Wednesday starts the first full day of the workshop itself. And we will be offering, this will be the day of our bus tours. So registration will open at 7 o'clock. We will be loading the bus about 7.50 and buses will be rolling at 8 a.m. We have two buses that will be taking place and going alternate routes similar to what we did last year. As we mentioned earlier, our four stops will be Arbor Day Farm, Bloom where you're planted, Midwest Hop Producers, and Slaughtery Vintage Estates. We will actually have our lunch stop at Slaughtery Vintage Estates. And then Wednesday evening, we'll come back to um, Arbor Day, or we'll come back to the Lead Lodge, and at their Steinhardt Lodge is where the Taste and Feel of Nebraska event will pl take place. So, just to give you a little idea of some of our stops, Arbor Day Farm will be the first one that we'll tour in the morning when we take off. Some of the things you will notice there um, that they want to showcase are their inter. inter uh, interpretational, excuse me, trails, their treetop village, discovery ride, nature explore classrooms, their apple house market, seasonal activities, and some of the exciting events and weddings that they take place, that they host there. And the big thing we really encourage you is to look at different things that you see along the way and just how you might take some of these ideas and implement them in your business with back home. Our next stop will be the Bloom Where You're Planted Farm. Offerings will include the pumpkin patch. They also have turned, turned their barn into the vintage marketplace. They offer fall food and concession stands, um, all ages playgrounds, field trips, parties and events. They're even good at hosting just a, adult events once in a while, so getting the folks a chance to also become kids for a little bit. Our next stop will be the Midwest Hop Producers, the Hop Yard and Hemp Farm. They were actually chosen as one of the, the first farms to test the hemp and so it will be exciting to hear what they've discovered up to this point and will be sharing with us some of their experiments and uh, some of the production and how that's all taken place. We'll also see learn more about the hop production and sale, um, what they do with some of the hop crafts and merchandise that they offer within their, their place of business. Craft beer tasting room is another thing that they offer there along with events and weddings throughout the year. Our next stop will be Slaughtery Vintage Estates. We're excited to be able to showcase this place to you as well. Um, they do hold summer concert series here. The taste, they have a tasting room and a vintage club. Um, the exciting thing that we're anxious to show you is their glamping yurts and the bungalow accommodations and how those work and what those are like. And, and they are more than happy to share with you the pros and cons of what they've found with offering those. They also built on another building to host events and weddings, which is the Heritage Hall Event Center, and that is where we will have our lunch on Wednesday afternoon. From there, once we return back to the hotel, to Lead Lodge, we'll have a, about an hour downtime before we go into our Taste and Feel of Nebraska event. Um, our vendor registration form and our sponsorship form, along with the agenda and everything, can be found on our website under the industry section as well. But to give you an idea of the taste and feel event, our whole purpose here is to showcase Nebraska quality homemade and homegrown products, including Nebraska beers and wines. 
it's exciting to be able to go to visit these places and see these attractions and people always are looking for that souvenir to take home and they want something Nebraska made. So this is a great way to showcase your product, um, to get into different, get, different gift shops and other tourism entities. Um, those that are providing um, non-alcoholic products, they can be sold during this time frame. Um, we ask that vendors do provide samples for approximately 150 attendees. It'll be set up similar to a farmer's market. And then this is a great opportunity, like we mentioned, to network and just visit with potential partners for cross-marketing. Uh, you do need, if you're doing food and wines and different things like that, proper licensing and certification for food and beverage sales must be followed. So <clears throat> Thursday um, is when we'll be having our educational sessions. Um, so you have a great list of exciting speakers coming to you this year. Um, so starting off on Thursday, we'll open registration at 7 a.m. Um, and we are gonna offer um, a, a breakfast as well. So feel free to come on down anytime to register, um, you know, between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. really. Any, any time in there you can register. From 8 to 9, we will be offering a breakfast. Um, Lead Lodge will provide us a little um, <clears throat> um, kind of breakfast buffet um, down um, uh, near, the, near the rooms in which the presentations will be taking place. So it'll be really accessible and really easy um, and really yummy as always. Um, the, um, from 9 to 9.15, we'll have a workshop welcome and opening remarks. We um, are pleased to share that the Lieutenant Governor plans to be in attendance, um, so he will be helping us to kick off the workshop that morning. <coughs> um, we have then our keynote speaker. Um, his name is Jeremy Fontana, um, and he'll be giving a presentation titled A Look Inside Eau Diable Ver, Award-Winning Ecotourism Destination. Um, so Eau Diable Ver is an award-winning four-season ecotourism <coughs> operation in the Green Mountains of Quebec, Canada, just a mile from Vermont, so really close to the States, really accessible to a lot of American tourists as well. Um, they feature unique eco-lodging and people-powered activities. They actually um, don't allow um, any motorized um, uh, vehicles on their property, so it's, it's very much kind of a get back in touch with nature type of place. Um, the resort has grown from a tiny startup to one of the best examples of eco and agritourism in North America. Um, they now have um, over 460 acres and 25 employees. And the tale of how this business grew so rapidly and became known for innovative accommodation and world-class activities will inspire you to take bigger risks and seek opportunities that you never imagined. So a little bit more um, about this. These are photos of the um, Eau Diable Ver Resort, um, which, as I said, is in Quebec, Canada. Um, so it's kind of an unusual concept in the world of outfitters, um, but it becomes more popular and more relevant each year. Um, um, instead of a fishing rod, of just a fishing rod or a rifle, our, their guests have the chance to appreciate nature and the spectacular view of the Appalachian and Green Mountains with binoculars, cameras, hiking poles, or kites, um, and, and always encouraged to participate with loved ones. Um, facilitating the Quebec wilderness experience, no matter what the season, is kind of what this place is about. So they really aim to um, expand their season um, to where they in, invite people to come in all four seasons of the year. So even in the winter time, when there's most certainly snow on the ground, um, people are, are able to take place in co cross-country skiing activities, um, snowshoeing, um, lots of different things that are readily made available and trails that are still marked and made accessible for people to really enjoy um, nature um, all four seasons throughout the year. Um, they also offer quite a unique and broad range of accommodations. Um, so they can choose from uh, one of their luxurious Mountain View suites or one of 24 rustic four season cabins. Um, and several of those are treehouse cabins, which is kind of exciting. Um, and, um, and it's just another reason um, 
for their success is their ability to offer something for every taste and budget. <clears throat> So Jeremy Fontana is the owner and operator of Eau de Alba Ver. Um, he's been doing that since uh, he and his wife purchased the property in 2005. Um, back then it was just a small wilderness campground and he's kind of used his experience and innovative mind to really expand the property um, and its offerings to make it what it is today. Um, so uh, some of his crazy kooky wonderfully successful ideas was Vela Voyant, which is a suspended tree canopy <clears throat> um, adventure re via recumbent bicycle. So it's essentially a series of cables um, that are kind of extended through the, through the forest and you climb up um, into a tree and you get hooked in, strapped into like a little bicycle and you propel yourself through the forest on these cables like above the trees. So wild concept but, um, but really has become popular for him um, uh, and his most recent <clears throat> um, venture um, is with National Geographic where they have partnered to create the world's first augmented reality um, open air planetarium experience called Observatoire uh, Night Sky Odyssey. So he will be giving another um, talk which um, uh, later on in the workshop, which will be focused on that experience and kind of how that came about um, and what they currently offer. Um, so uh, they recently, um, Eau de Diable Ver recently received Canada's version of a dark sky site, so a Canadian dark sky preserve. Um, and um, so that's something that they had to go through um, you know, a series of changes to bring about, and now they've protected their nightscape to really ensure that this brand new astrotourism experience will continue to be awe-inspiring years into the future. <clears throat> um, so every guest that attends the Night Sky Odyssey will receive a newly developed augmented reality headset created by Horizon in the Netherlands, um, which allows them to see the actual night sky but then they digitally overlay um, different constellations in the sky and point out stars and planets. So a lot of people um, you know, know that there's apps on your phone that can kind of show you where things are in the sky. This is taking that one step further in that you're actually physically looking at the night sky and you're just getting these digital projections laid over top of what you're physically seeing. So it's really state-of-the-art, one, one, one of a kind experience. Um, and the crazy, maybe the craziest thing about it is that once you're done, um, you're allowed to keep the headset. Um, so you can take it home after their show and continue to joy, enjoy um, using it at home. Um, so we're really excited to hear um, about, uh, from Jeremy and um, learn about Eau Diable Ver and also his newest endeavor, Night Sky Odyssey. Then from 10.45 to noon, we'll have our first set of concurrent sessions. We'll have three sessions going on at the same time. Craft Beer Tourism and its Role in Neighborhood Revitalization by Neil Reed. Neil is a professor of geography and planning at the University of Toledo. His presentation will document the growth of craft breweries, explain the growing popularity of craft beer tourism, and, exa and examine its economic benefits. The second session will be on strategies for media coverage on a shoestring budget by Christina Lenkowski. Christina has worked with busy tourism marketers, the most effective ways to build a solid marketing and public relations program, regardless of budget or time constraints. Attendees of her session will learn about reactive media opportunities and how to take advantage of this free resource. Eric and Barrett and Rob Leeds will be talking about emergency preparedness and management strategies. They are both from the Ohio State University Extension. Um, this session will help businesses move forward using basic best practices for consideration to the risk and hazards of daily operations, as well as how to develop an emergency preparedness pla plan. Actually, when you get done with that, you'll probably have a nice rough draft that you can actually use in your businesses. So we hope for you to attend that one as well. So 
So next, um, we do have a breakout, which again features Jeremy. So he's our keynote speaker, and he'll be talking about Eau Diable Vert in that presentation. And then in this breakout session, he'll be going um, into more detail about um, his newest venture, which is what I just explained, that the Night Sky Odyssey um, astrotourism experience. Um, so for those of you that are interested in that, be sure to check it out. Um, we have Brad, um, Brad Kindler, who is um, Ar Arbor Day Farm's very own um, grounds manager. Um, so he is going to be speaking about how food can define the cultural identity of a region or enhance the cultural identity of a region. Um, so much like Nebraska City's Bloody Mary competition or their Applejack Festival, um, in which they also offer um, the farm to fork dinner. Um, you know, activities like that, um, that kind of give an identity to regions. So Nebraska City is really known as being like the apple capital um, of Nebraska and maybe even a larger part of the country, uh, attracting 60,000 visitors annually to their Applejack Festival. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a history there, um, but it's one that's been, um, you know, pushed. So um, using the, the, the cultural food heritage of your re region to turn it into a tourism draw um, and how, how, how kind of some of the tools and things that can get you started on that journey is what Brad will be talking about. Um, and then the third session <laughs> during that time frame is Agritourism Liability and Siting by Rusty Rumley. Rusty is with the National Agricultural Law um, Organization. And so he will come to this session and give people tips on how to work with your planning and zoning groups, things to look for. Um, some of those issues out there that uh, agritourism businesses may be dealing with and they're, they're with liability issues and such. And so he's the perfect one to be asking all those questions about what do I do if or how do I plan this if. Um, so if you have questions at looking at getting started, how to go through that process with your city, county um, organizations, he's the one to be visiting with. So the agritourism liability, bring your questions. It'll be pretty much an open session. He'll hit on the main topics that are out there right now. And then from there, he'll just take time to try and answer all of your questions. The next set of concurrent sessions will take place from 3.30 to 4.45. Um, Eric and Rob again will do the customer best uh, customer service best practices. Um, that this one here, they'll be doing tips on on best practices out there from even as from the Walt Disney Institute. They both have done a number of trainings through that organization and have put together some great resources. Uh, Rob and Eric both have agritourism businesses themselves, and so they'll be sharing some of the things that they've learned too. We also have a panel during that time frame that will be talking about maximizing your exposure with partnerships. Neil Reed will be part of that, Gabby Alia with um, Nebraska Craft Brewers, Jesse Hoft, and Jessica Krauss. And they'll just be sharing different things that they have experienced, the pros, the cons, and what's worked for them in developing partnerships um, to help promote their activities in this area. Um, great information that will also be coming from chamber perspective and economic development perspective so a lot of good insight with that one there and then um michaela ray is with the wild turkey federation um she works with them and also over at game and parks um, and she um, actually came to us wanting to speak about how to reinvigorate hunting in rural communities um, so her session will mostly focus on kind of how to keep, um, in recent years, hunting um, and fishing has been in decline. Um, so one of Game and Park's big missions right now is to kind of reinvigorate those past times. Um, so she's going to be talking about ways that communities can um, increase or have better access to um, hunting and fishing within their community and how to market and attract people um, to their rural communities for those activities. And then we have um, our optional add-on. So we wanted to kind of um, use this as an opportunity to go to, into a little bit more detail about what these add-ons are, how you can register, how you should register, um, all of those things. Um, so we have listed out um, here the optional add-ons that are available for advanced registration. Um, not only are they available for advanced registration, 
but they must be registered for in advance. So, um, if you're interested in one of these activities, don't wait until the day of. Um, most of these will um, do have capacity limits set, um, and they won't run if we don't meet capacity ahead of the workshop. So we need you guys, if you're interested, please um, sign up for these activities in addition to your workshop registration. So you'll pay an, an, um, the, the um, associated additional fees um, um, associated with these activities. Um, uh, Nebraska City has really done a great job in bringing these to us, so we really hope we can fill them. Um, I'm looking forward to maybe attending one or two myself, um, and I'm really excited about that. So, just to run you through these, we've got the, um, the Farm to Fork Dinner, which we've already talked a bit about, which will take place on Tuesday. Um, so that'll be a three-course meal um, inspired by um, some of the, the seasons, uh, some of the produce that's in season in the winter. Um, and prepared for you by some of the region's um, most well-known chefs. Um, and then on Thursday, um, after the workshop, so after the educational sessions, we'll have the opportunity um, to do one of two tour times, uh, a Mystery Mansion tour of Morton Mansion at Arbor Lodge State Historical Park. Um, so it's really close to Arbor Day Farm and Lead Lodge, like a stone's throw away. You don't have to travel far. We may even be able to arrange a shuttle or something like that around this event. Um, so from six to eight or eight to 10, you pick your time. Um, just let us kind of, just kind of list that for us or shoot us an email with that if, um, um, if you're concerned about which one, you know, um, you're thinking about. Um, so that's gonna be $25. And it's going to be a fun way to tour this historic mansion, um, which was um, originally owned by the Mortons. Um, some of you may have heard of Morton Salt, the little girl with the umbrella on the salt box. That's, that's the family. Um, and so they set up this really neat little like murder mystery. So you can tour the mansion while playing the, kind of like a game of Clue. Um, so it sounds like a ton of fun. Um, I'm really excited and interested in doing that one. Um, <clears throat> another one of the optional add-ons is the gourmet cooking class, um, which is going to be um, done um, by Gina Stavez. She's going to show people how to um, uh, create a gourmet meal, and um, uh, um, this will take place at Whispering Pines Bed and Breakfast, which is her um, business right there in Nebraska City. Um, she's also offering a breakfast on Friday morning, so for those of you that aren't in a rush, um, be sure to um, stick around, register in advance to go and have breakfast with Gina. Even though Lead Lodge has excellent food, Gina is like amazing. So you definitely want to check out what she's got on offer. Um, that one is $12. Um, so for the optional add-ons that are not available for advanced registration, these are the two that involve alcohol. So. Um, these will need to be paid for at the time of service. Um, we have the $8 um, Arbor Day Farm wine tasting. This takes place in the lobby of the Lee Lodge, so just feel free to go down there um, and enjoy that and pay with the gift shop directly. Um, and then the mixology lesson, um, we'll have a registration sheet available. Again, we have two times, so 6 to 7.30, 8.30 to 10 p.m. So the, the reasoning for these times is that you could if you wanted to, theoretically, do both a mixology lesson and maybe, say, the Mystery Mansion tour. You just need to ju you know, juggle those to where you did an earlier one and a later one. Um, so that, that can be coordinated and that would be, probably be a lot of fun. So um, pay attention to the times. Um, we'll have a sign-up sheet available for this at the registration booth. Um, I believe they said I'm no more than eight or, or ten people in each um, of the mixology lessons. So this one will fill fast. So when you register, ask, the, ask our folks at the registration booth. Um, we'll get you signed up um, and then you can pay for that again at the time um, of fulfillment. So just a little bit more about these. Yeah, so as just kind of a repeat here of the optional add-ons, the farm to fork dinner. We mentioned this already, but Nebraska City does a great job in offering this activity every year in Nebraska City. And so they will share with you as they're doing their farm to fork dinner, some of the tips and things that has worked for them, how they put it together. It's a great time to get those questions answered and experience some really delicious food from some amazing chefs in their area. 
The next um, add-on was the Mystery Mansion Tour at Arbor Day Historic Park. Like Jenna mentioned, it's a great opportunity to have some fun while touring the mansion and learning the history of it, doing that who, figuring out who done it. Um, sign up for one or two or as many of these activities as you'd like to. Um, and these are all available online to register for ahead of time. The third one is the gourmet cooking class. Actually, she's doing a Thai bow on your workshop experience. So come learn how to do make Thai food. Gina offers these um, cooking classes at her bed and breakfast on a regular basis. So she'll show how she pulls that culinary aspect into her tourism business as well. Again, capacity is limited, so register early. Um, we can't reinforce that enough. Once they are full, they're going to be full. So, um, And you get to eat the food after you make it, so it's a delicious meal there. And then, of course, the other one is the Arbor Day Farm Wine Tasting. They offer this at a regular, on a regular basis at the Lead Lodge by their gift shop area. So it's a great, great way of sampling the Arbor Day Farm selections of wines. There is no limit on the number of registrants that can take part in this. And you can register and pay at the Lead Lodge gift shop for that one. And then, of course, the mixology lesson. Lead Lodge's best bartenders will spill their secrets on how to craft custom cocktails and let registrants step behind the bar to shake things up. There is a limit again for this activity, so sign up will take place at the, for this one at the registration table at the workshop. So make sure if you're interested in this to make it in early to register at the, at the registration table at the Lead Lodge. And then breakfast Friday morning, February 28th, before you leave town, treat yourself to a wonderful breakfast at Whispering Pine B&B and enjoy a selection of some of the guests' favorite breakfast items. So again, capacity is limited. We do need you to register so they know how, what kind of food count to look at. Um, but yeah, you'll get to sample some of those favorite foods that their guests enjoy at the Whispering Pines bed and breakfast. And hopefully if the weather's nice, take a tour of the grounds because it's absolutely beautiful. beautiful. So, yeah. And if you have questions, as always, we are your contacts. So we have our contact information there. I'll leave that up. Um, and then I think we'll just field some questions from Callie if we are ready for that. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, I do have a couple questions for you. <clears throat> kind of losing my voice here. Um, so the first one comes out from Kimball, and they're asking how much time will we have to visit each stop along the bus tour? The um, bus tour locations will kind of vary some, so but it'll be anywhere from an hour and a half to probably two hours per stop. So of course the lunch stop might be a little longer because we're including the meal, but some of the other ones be an hour and a half so an hour and a half to two hours to <clears throat> stop okay and they were a little worried about time and so they were curious if any of the people who you're going to visit on the tour if they're going to be at the conference and have a booth we're hoping that they'll be able to attend the conference at least parts of it um and they probably won't have a booth but they'll definitely be available for you to ask questions and visit with them and the bus tours are so interactive so you know, the reason we build on that one and a half to two hours is really so people can ask their questions then. So um, ideally there'll be two buses, so there'll be smaller group sizes. Um, you know, we, we encourage people to ask questions. That's kind of what these are about. Um, so not only will the different bus destinations share, you know, information, we'll be walking around their properties, viewing some of their offerings, and people will be able to ask questions on the spot. Um, uh, and an additional note to that, please dress warmly because it is going to be in Fe the end of February. We really hope for like 60 degree weather, but let's not count on that. Let's, let's, let's make sure that we are dressed warmly um, as some of these locations are mostly outside, um, um, you know, operations. Um, so comfortable walking shoes, warm clothes, um, and we'll be, and we'll have a great time. And that's just, just to kind of add on to that, that's another reason why it's really important to register early because so we do know how, for sure how many buses we need. We do need to let them know ahead of time. So if you're interested in taking part in the bus tour, we'd love to get you signed up for your, this, to attend the conference early. Um, yeah, the sooner the better. Wonderful. <clears throat> okay, this question comes from Grand Island. 
and they've let me know, um, they've, they've told me that they're planning to come on Thursday, but they're curious if they can come for the Taste of and Feel event that's on Wednesday night. They can, they just have to pay the Wednesday registration fee. Okay. So we have it split up by days. Um, that was probably the easiest way to yeah. take care of that, so. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I think that, um, you know, it, it becomes difficult. This year we've got all these wonderful optional add-ons, but with that comes a lot of logistics. So um, that's one reason why we spent so much time explaining what our optional extras are. The Taste and Feel event has been a part of our workshop for many years. So it's part, an integral part of the workshop. If you want to attend, we really encourage you to because it's a wonderful networking experience and um, you get to, you know, meet a lot of neat people, try lots of really neat, um, uh, um, yummy Nebraska made products um, or um, you know lotions the whole gamut um, um, so it is a great mm -hmm. event you will need to register for um, full you know for the full Wednesday registration or simply the complete workshop if you want to attend more than one day and by registering for the <coughs> Wednesday Thursday complete workshop it's actually cheaper, cheaper. than doing each day separate yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. they'll be getting their break that way yeah perfect okay the next question comes from Crofton and they would like to know if the workshop session descriptions are online. They are not online, but within about a week, they will be. So look for those um, within the next week. Um, you can go to um, our website, visitnebraska.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom. At the bottom, there's a nice brown task bar that says an industry will be one of the links. You click industry, that'll take you to conferences. Um, and you'll see our workshop um, as listed as the first um, as the first available um, icon. So you want to click on that. That'll take you in and, and tell you more about. Um, there'll be forms that you can download for sponsorships, um, the taste and field registration form. Um, we do have a schedule posted there, and I will add the session descriptions um, within the next week. Um, so you can look for that to be updated within about a week or so. Perfect. And I know you did briefly touch on this during your presentation here, um, but this came from Carney, and they want to just clarify on the optional add-ons that you have. So the ones that are available for advanced registrations, they do not allow walk-ins, correct? It has to be done in advance. Correct. So the reason that we can't allow walk-ins is because we need to make sure that we have fill rates that will actually merit us following through with these optional add-on activities. So if no one registers, there won't be a mixology lesson. Um, but our hope is, is that you know, by giving you the information early, getting you excited about it, that you'll really want to participate in these activities. I'm going to sign up for at least two, um, and I really hope that, um, that people will um, you know, uh, have, a, have a fun time and, and treat themselves to some of these great optional extras. Um, so you can't, you can't decide the day of, you've got to decide, des decide ahead of time. Um, since you're already there, I mean, you know, stick around, have some fun with us. So, And yeah. like we mentioned, it's a great way to get some ideas of things to do back at your own business. So how you might be able to in, in, intertwine maybe a food, a cooking course, or a fun event like a murder mystery type of activity. So it's, it's a great way of experiencing that. Wonderful. Okay, I have two more questions for you. The next one comes from Grand Island. So they're asking if there are any sponsorships, or excuse me, <laughs> scholarship opportunities. I know North Platte it has um, scholarships available for at least two attendees. So what we really encourage you to do, if that is a hardship for you, or you're looking for that, to contact your local county CBB or tourism office. And you can always give us a call too. Um, sometimes we have different sponsors that will offer it too. Uh, but right now, the ones that we're familiar with that's offering it is the, Nebraska, or is the North Platte uh, Tourism Office. So yeah, anyone in Lincoln County can go through North Platte CBB to acquire their, um, their, their expense paid. Right. You'd have yeah. to live in that county. Right. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes, I know in the past we've had um, some students um, attend from um, universities. Again, if there are any students out there that are thinking this sounds interesting or applicable to their course of study, I would encourage you to go through the avenues that exist um, 
at your college or university to see if there are um, maybe additional opportunities there um, for them to send you. Um, every year we usually get about a handful of students um, that, that do attend and I think they have a really fulfilling and fun experience. So um, check, check through those, those avenues that exist within, um, within your a university or college. Wonderful. And I did have one last question for you. I don't know if you mentioned this, but is there a deadline for sponsors? There is. It's a soft deadline. We would love um, to feature you as a sponsor in all of our workshop materials. Um, so I believe we've set that deadline for the 24th of January. Um, so January 24th um, will be the deadline. Um, you can check online again to, um, to get that information. It's on the um, sponsorship registration form. It will have that in bold. Um, so try and get us that information by January 24th. Um, we will still happily accept sponsorships after that date. They just won't necessarily be able to be featured in our marketing materials. Um, so they won't be listed on our sponsorship boards and they won't be listed on um, uh, uh, the workshop program booklet that we produce as part of the workshop. So, um, you know, that's a really that's a really nice thing to have. So we encourage you to try and get the sponsorships in by that January 24th deadline. Okay, because it is January 30th. That's right. Okay. January 30th, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so the forward. deadline is passed, but you're still we'll accepting still sponsorships okay. yes. now. We will still take them. And the same right. with the taste and tasting event vendors, we will still right. take them. The sooner the better and the more opportunities for marketing on their part, the yeah. sooner they get us the information. So maybe it was, I'm sorry, my months are all screwed up, but maybe it was, maybe it was February 24th. It's, it okay. was something, it, we, there's still time to get your yeah. sponsorships in. So get them into us, try and get us, try and get them to us at least two weeks before um, the workshop so that we do have time to incorporate them into our marketing materials. Okay, wonderful. Well, those are all the questions that I was sent in. So I want to say thank you again for being speakers and sharing more information. I hope everyone comes to the workshop and definitely sticks around for the add-in options. Those sound like a lot of fun. I know I'm personally very excited for a couple of them. Um, so thank you very much. And for all of our listeners who are still with us, please, um, please fill out the survey. It only takes a couple seconds. Let us know your thoughts and um, if you have any additional questions or future webinar content that you would like to see. Um, we love all of that feedback. Again, you can always email me at callie.osted at nebraska.gov. So thank you all.